All right, good day. Um, so, um, shalom. I'm, I'm Peter Magnuson. Um, I was trying to practice the phrase, how are you guys, in, in Hebrew, but I, it didn't stick too old. I was training over there, but it didn't Mahin <laughs> Yanim. Um, so, pleasure to be here. Um, so, I'm Peter Magnus, I'm an engineering director at Google. I, um, I'm, most of my work is I, I run App Engine Engineering, I also uh, run much of the business side of, of App Engine, um, and I'm also involved in some other areas of, of cloud platform. Um, so, so, here's, um, I'll have my email at the end as well, but if, if you're App Engine developers and you hate something, then email that, and, and, uh, and, and, I'll, and I'll tell someone else to fix it. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over just for those of you who don't know this this presentation has like two sections I'm going to go through pretty quick and we're around afterwards for, for conversations and so forth um, so I'm going to have first couple of slides just for those of you who don't know what App Engine is at all um, just present a little bit more in detail about what it is and then I'll have another section that sort of assumes you are actually an App Engine developer and you care about some details and I'm going to go through some of the roadmap stuff um, and hopefully there's a couple of new, new items in there. Um, but if you've been super paying attention online and so forth, not, not much of this will be, will be new. So the, um, the, the, the original vision from App Engine was to, to, make, to be able to make it really simple to write apps and make it really easy for them to, to manage them for, for scalability and for, for, uh, for management of them and ownership of them. So the sort of mantra that we, 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 we derived was that it should be very easy to build, should be simple to scale. It's never ever trivial to scale, no matter how easy you sort of set it up. But it really should be trivial to manage. Um, we, um, we changed prices about a year and a half ago, and I got a fun email from a user who got really upset that he suddenly had to uh, enable his credit card because the application, he hadn't had to do anything on his application for six months. And then a few minutes afterwards, he sent me another email, and he just realized that when he typed that, that the fact that he hadn't had to do anything to keep the application running for six months maybe meant it was worth $3 um, a month. So, you know, it's, it's a platform. You build and test your app. Uh, you upload it, uh, and everything else is, is managed by, by Google. Um, it's nowadays, this is referred to as platform as a service. The creation of App Engine was actually one of the products that, instigated people to invent the term um, platform as a service because the idea really is to make it invisible to you what the facilities are that it's running on to hide that it's VMs, hide that there's disks, hide that there's network and focus on the developer experience so you should just be given ideally you should just be given a, a, a straight as forward as possible API definition and then be able to write the application and then just worry about the business logic, um, and then be able to manage it from web pages, and then you should have as little as possible else to worry about. Um, if you if you are um, if you're interested in in finding out a little bit better, we recently um, launched something called Cloud Playground, um, which allows you to edit simple App Engine applications on your web browser and and run them. Um, that's, it's actually an App Engine application that creates App Engine applications and then manages them and runs them. Um, pretty cool sort of self-referential. And we're going to be increasingly using this as sort of live documentation so that when there's sample code and, th and things, how to do things, you can just click on it and it actually creates an application for you. You don't have to install an SDK or anything like that. In the interest of time, I'm, I'm not going to demo this today. Um, of course, um, just a quick flash that you know, increasingly the cloud platform um, is is a is a mixture of a number of different capabilities. So as applications become more complicated, more sophisticated, you start bringing in uh, sort of more assets of of, of what, what what Google has across cloud platform. Um, in you know, notable is is the addition of of, of compute engine, which uh, initially is being used a lot for batch processing and and and, and things like that. And a number of related services around it, messaging endpoints. I'll be talking about a few of them. Um, but the idea is to, you know, the vision is to allow you to approach app, uh, cloud platform in one of two ways. You can either come at it with a greenfield idea, you're writing something from scratch, and then you get started on App Engine, you just off you go. 
And then as it becomes more complicated or needs some more specific capabilities, you can expand out to use other cloud platform uh, products, or you are forklifting over from another more traditional LAMP stack, and we're moving towards making it easier for you to onboard um, existing stacks and existing setups onto onto cloud platform. Um, so let's see here. So here's here's a here's a, a fun example uh, of a, a a happy startup customer. Um, in, in the U.S., there's a lot of startup activity around shared riding, shared uh, new ta forms of taxi um, from all different kinds of perspectives. It's quite interesting, actually. Um, one of them is a, is a company called GetAround, which is, aims to make it really simple for you to rent your car to somebody else. And they, got, um, they won a TechCrunch Disrupt, um, which is a, in the U.S., a, a pretty distinguished way of, of, of getting out there as a startup. And the traffic curve here is is what happened when the announcement came out that they'd won and it came out on Twitter and because everybody was following TechCrunch. So they went up um, I think something like two orders of magnitude in, in, in traffic and in immediate interest. And all their in, all their operations engineers are visible in this picture because they're all up on stage accepting the price while while this thing is going off, and they realized afterwards that none of their pagers went off. Nobody was calling, complaining. It just sort of just worked. And they came back and they looked at this chart and they emailed it over to us and they said, "Thanks, guys. It just it just worked." Mm -hmm. Now I do encourage you to benchmark that it, you haven't got any broken logic in your software um, when it hits that spike because um, uh, we can't fix your source for it for you. Uh, another sort of bigger, uh, uh, Greg already mentioned Song Pop as, as one example, um, but I wanted to emphasize some of the numbers here. This is a startup that went from zero to 60 million users in less than a year uh, without having to re-architect or, 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 or rebuild or anything like that, and they did this with a, a shockingly small number of engineers. Um, and we're striving increasingly to make it easier to maintain, have visibility into what's going on, adding various ways for analyzing your code and, and seeing where your costs are going. Um, so that's sort of what App Engine is. So the next couple of slides are going to, if you're, if you don't know much about App Engine, you can check your cell phones or look out the window or something. I'm going to go into more sort of details for those of you who really care about, uh, about App Engine. Um, so I'm going to be summarizing some of the new things that we're doing. Uh, and that we're adding in some of the themes of improvements. There's a lot of investment that we're doing improving App Engine. Um, so an application today in App Engine uh, is basically uh, one or more versions of, of one or more instances. And one of the nice things about App Engine is how easy it is to, to manage versions and roll back versions and run multiple versions without having to think about how that's actually done on the system. And the principal data system, uh, storage system that's used out of the box that's really easy to use is, is the data store. And then as you start getting bigger, you want to start using the, 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 the memcache, and then you want to start building a multi, sort of modularized application where you're splitting out different kinds of logic from front-end serving traffic to, to analysis and business logic. Um, and then you're probably orchestrating this with something called task queues. Uh, you're probably starting to use some of the other storages like blob storage, um, and you and increasingly as if the application becomes sophisticated, uh, you start writing multi-language. For example, it's quite common for people to write the front-end code in Python because it's very easy to prototype and iterate, um, and sort of the back-end server kind of code either in Java or Go because they tend to be more appropriate for code that's not undergoing so much change. In fact, I advocate people to do all their prototype development in Python, and then when they're going to do a recode and cleanup to rebuild it um, in Java. Um, and then you will also tend to start breaking it up into multiple applications, some handling the mobile version, some handling some back-end stuff. Um, so as as these things get, as your applications get more sophisticated, as our customers get more demanding, um, we sort of identified a number of areas to to improve things. Um, most of these we announced at I.O. Uh, some of them are already out, and some of them are in, in the middle of rolling out. Um, first of all, the memcache that was available for App Engine developers was a shared memcache. It wasn't just shared with other App Engine developers. It was 
assets that were shared with other um, Google uh, uh, resources. The benefit of that was that it was free. Uh, so we're going to keep that option. So there is a free memcache for App Engine developers. Um, but we then discovered lots of customers who said, look, we don't really care if it costs or not. We actually just want it to behave a lot better for us. And we need a lot more. We had customers telling us they wanted two terabytes um, of memcache. So um, uh, we've added um, a, a, it's now in preview, a dedicated memcache. You can make your own reservations. You're in control of it. Um, there's no, there's no um, evictions from, from other applications. You just dial up how much you need for your application. This has been, has been extremely popular with the large, large customers. Um, app, uh, task queues has had a, a, a number of challenges. If you've been, if you've been, if you've been a heavy user of them, um, there's been, there, there, they are not, there, there, it's, it's, it wasn't really, it's been used in ways that it wasn't really intended to be used. Um, People started using it as effectively a message bus. People started using it as with massive rights. It was kind of intended as sort of like a cron job thing, things you can't do in 30, 60 second response time. You would throw it off to there. Um, some developers is using it as a fan in for the data store and other like completely crazy use cases. Um, and it wasn't really built for 50,000 queries per second against a task queue system. Um, but we sort of realized that we should adapt to the patterns because we're assuming mostly that developers aren't idiots. They're actually trying to do patterns that, that, that make sense. Some cases the developers are idiots, but most of the time they're not. Um, so we're doing a lot of re-engineering of task queues to, to address a lot of the responsiveness, stability, uh, capabilities, improving statistics and so forth. So, you know, if you've been having problems with the task queues in the last few quarters, expect this to be improving a lot um, over the next several months as we roll this out. Another big thing uh, which we recently started rolling out is, is what we call App Engine modules. And it's basically another, we used to have the, the abstraction of, of applications and versions, and now we've also uh, added the, uh, the abstraction of modules. So you can build modularized applications uh, with different settings and so forth. Uh, we've had some customers cut their, their cost with App Engine by 30 or 40 percent. Um, because they can re-architect their application so that they don't have to force front-end traffic and back-end requests into, into the same logic, and they can set the, the, um, the, the latencies differently. Um, so one way, one way of exemplifying that is if you have, if you have a front-end service, you want to have very, very good guarantees of low latencies, but they take very small time to service, then you want to have a certain scheduler settings for that. But if you have more like back-end queries, back-end processing, you can probably accept, you know, sec seconds of latencies for response time. So then you don't have to have big uh, compute assets up available all the time, uh, which leads to much higher efficiencies. Um, we're also improving um, the integration with cloud storage. We're migrating, in fact, from the old Blob Store to just um, cloud, Google Cloud Storage, and making adding uh, default storage bucket support and making it much easier to be managing and adding buckets. So in general, um, App Engine is, it will be increasingly become, uh, for those of you who have applications that are basically sort of storage management applications of various flavors, um, App Engine will become a very, very good platform for adding the layer of logic on top of that. Um, Yes, and of course, the cloud store, cloud storage per se has has more features than than, than Blob Store. Uh, dun, 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 skip that. Um, another, uh, probably the biggest thing that we're doing um, in the second half of 2013 is is we are um, rolling out something called VM Runtime. Um, the trusted tester program for this. Um, is, is available, so if you want to sign up and start playing with it, you can find it on our forums. We did sort of a pretty low-key uh, announcement of this thing on the forums, um, but it's a pretty big deal because we don't really need that many tests for it, and we didn't want to um, get people too excited because we need to stabilize this for a bit. But basically, it is Compute Engine VMs presented in an App Engine environment. Um, and I do have a great demo for it, but in the interest of time, I won't run it. But basically, it, we're creating a container that runs on a VM that is a compute engine VM, so it's a full-fledged VM that is fully forward compatible from App Engine. So your App Engine code will run unmodified on a VM, 
And as a developer, the only thing you need to do is change one line of configuration. You have to tell App Engine that this is not running on a Python uh, App Engine front end. It's running on a full VM. And then App Engine will just do everything that needs to be done. You don't have to worry about um, load balancing for it or auto scaling or failover or health checking or any of that. It just magically brings up a VM in the background that runs that code. So this starts, this sort of begins the process of um, muddying the waters of what is the difference between infrastructure as a service and platform as a service. Because as we start adding infrastructure capabilities to platform as a service, like cloud storage and, and compute, and as we adding improved platform management, infrastructure management capabilities to compute engine, which is our infrastructure as a service, it becomes a continuum. So one of the things we're striving to do is instead of having this cliff difference between, okay, you either are fully managed or you're in charge of all the bits and bolts, is to create a continuum where you can let us manage things for you unless you have very particular opinions about parts of it, and then you go in and sort of manage it yourself. Uh, Greg alluded to, uh, Greg, you mentioned one of the um, analogies that we use here to explain what we're trying to do, which is in the old days you would write a, um, you know, you write a Pascal program, but it wasn't really good at numerical code, so then you'd throw in some assembly language when you needed it, but only you know once you discovered that you needed it. And the, we think the new world of cloud computing is, is going to have the analogous of very powerful, high-level abstractions for building applications, but where you can sort of opt out of it in areas that it makes um, a lot of sense. Uh, to make this concrete, let me give you an example. We had one customer who was pretty unhappy with how much it cost them to use data store for a presence server. If you're not familiar with what a presence server is, basically a lot of social applications and so forth need a service that you can easily query and say, which of my friends are online right now in some sense of online. Um, and they ended up using data store for this. They would push the timestamps into it and then do queries. Um, which is a pretty insane use of data store because that is a massively backed up, replicated, multi-data center, yada, yada, yada. And I asked them, do you really need multiple nines on this thing? You know, do you really need, isn't the, rea do you really, isn't the reality that if this server goes down every couple of days or five minutes, it doesn't really matter because it's, you know, this is not critical. And they said, yeah, yeah, that's not important at all. Um, so I said, well, if you just do a single stand-up server on this and just restart every two days and just have it all in cache, that's like one or two orders of magnitudes less expensive resource-wise than running a, ma a massive data system behind it. Um, but the reality is in the past, um, those kind of architectural decisions were really, really cumbersome to do in App Engine. You'd have to opt out to, well, historically EC2, you would have to hop out to Compute Engine now and then do all of the, all the logic to tie everything together yourself. What we're trying to do here is that if you discover that there's a section of your code that really would be useful to break out a sort of a specialized service, specialized storage thing, and you want to you want to code that up in C++ or whatever, we want to make it really, really simple for you to say, oh, I just need four servers over here, and here's the 4,000 lines of C++, and just give me 128 gig of memory, and then restart the servers every, every week, and I'm fine, without having to do any configuration other than what I just said. Um, so that's what we're targeting with here, and we think this is going to be a really big deal. Um, and then, of course, it's been, um, uh, PHP has been uh, the biggest request uh, re uh, for over a long period of time. Um, it turns out that an, you know, an embarrassing percentage of the internet is, is written in, in, in PHP. Um, so PHP is like the new x86 that very few people defend on aesthetic grounds. Um, but, but, it's, but it is, you know, it's the reality, is the assembly language of the internet. Um, so we've added PHP support. And when we add PHP support to App Engine, it's not just like a LAMP stack with PHP on it. We've actually, you know, ported the 5.4 Zen server to run on App Engine NACL server side. So you have a dramatically different experience. This is not your, you know, your, your, your typical PHP server. This is scaling much more quickly, better security. It's, again, has the characteristic that if you're not getting traffic for it, it's, it goes down to, to zero cost in serving. Um, so this has been greeted with, with a lot of interest. Yeah, I think I covered a lot of this. And, and Greg covered the, uh, the cloud data store. Um, and 
as we're coordinating between App Engine and, and Compute Engine, um, you know, we'll be adding uh, cloud cloud deployment services to make it to make it easier for you pushing out systems that 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 cut across these services. Uh, let's see, I'm probably totally out of time, so I should. How, how's the? I'm okay. Eleven ten was my cutoff, right? Oh wow! <laughs> Look at that! Look at that! Um, so another thing that's pretty cool if you're if you're um, if you're a mobile developer or if mobile is important for your application, um, which I would assume is is true for many of you, it's you know uh, more than half of, of in fact we're seeing the bulk of development happening on mobile side. Um, so we've added something called uh, Google Cloud Endpoints that basically is. Is, is targeting to make it as simple as possible from an auth perspective, connectivity perspective, and so forth to coordinate between server-side code and, and client code. Um, and we have a really neat thing uh, called the Mobile Backend Starter, uh, which is on our, on our, on our websites, um, which I really encourage you to take for a spin. And it basically um, in, in includes the client library and the backend starter stuff to just hook together your application um, with with App Engine, with with our storage systems, um, and coordinated with the cloud, uh, with the Google Cloud messaging from from the from the Android universe, um, to make this stuff have as little a little pain as possible to get this up and running. So, you know, the 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 general areas of of of, of 2013 for App Engine is sort of to move from applications to to solutions. We've been rolling out uh, earlier this year, um, custom, improved customer experience. We have we have uh, a, a tier of support now. In particular, we have a tier of called gold support and up, and gold is still $400 per month, I think, and up. Um, and if you do anything of, that's important to you <laughs> on App Engine or Cloud, please go gold or higher, for God's sakes. I keep getting emails. Support hasn't been responsive, and I'm like, what's your support level? Oh, we haven't signed up for a support contract. Okay. Um, uh, adding extensibility to it and and, and improving uh, ac accessibility. A lot of the things that we're doing now is really addressing a lot of the limitations and constraints and challenges that our developers have encountered over the last several years with App Engine is sort of and sort of fundamentally uh, move the goalposts on 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 that ex on that developer experience. And and that's it. Thank you.